I was actually surprised to see this. And I was surprised to see a lot of people actually caring about this and actually believing this to be true. Because if you actually pay attention and you're a fan of Rocky and his music, you would know that ever since the whole um, Ian Connor rape allegations went down, ever since the whole um, ASAP Barry being convicted of fucking... What did he get convicted of? Was it m molestation or... or some, anyway, he got convicted of something in the UK. Ever since those two things went down... Rocky's always had this kind of thing that he does where he would have an outburst on stage where he'll say, fuck Bari, fuck Connor or something. He always kind of says that I feel like every other year something like that happens. But usually it's Bari. It would be like, oh, and that ASAP Bari boy, he's a bitch or something, right? And it would always be, in my opinion, somewhat performative. Like he's just doing it to get kudos points online, which is bizarre because I always got the feeling that Rocky didn't really care what people said about him online because he's the same person who famously said black women shouldn't wear like colored lipstick and shit and still was out here rocking or whatever. Maybe he says some very flagrant stuff from in public, but has never really shied away from, he's never really come out and like, you know, on a big fucking apology tour. So I, always, I never really understood why he would go out of his way to kind of try and say Barry's a bitch or Ian Corn's a bitch's lyrics just a piece of online when usually he doesn't usually care. But anyway, all things changed at Rolling Loud. He did do the same thing again. And at Rolling Loud Miami during his performance there as a headliner, which I don't know why that's happening still. I feel like ASAP Rocky has no business headlining any festival. Um, unfortunately, he is extremely washed now. And as a big fan of him and as a fan of ASAP Mob in general and kind of having grown up, kind of watching them sort of ascend, it's been quite sad to see. But it is pretty obvious to me that he is a bit washed and there's a lot of artists out there that probably deserve to headline those festivals more so than him. Regardless of that, during his set, he said the following. Cool young lord ASAP Barra, he a bitch. And young boy Ian Connor, he a bitch. Now, if you actually watched the performance, you would have seen that he didn't say this with his chest. It kind of came out a little bit... It kind of came out a little bit weak. It kind of came out a little bit like he kind of wanted to say it, then said it, then regretted it. He didn't really say it with any bass in his voice. So I wasn't... I didn't really take it seriously. I was like, oh, whatever. It's just whatever it may be. But the internet kind of ran with it. But maybe because the internet is kind of hoping that Rocky has this like come to Jesus moment where he finally realizes that Barry and Ian Connor probably aren't great guys and publicly sort of like admonishes them, which I don't really like. I've never understood this call for people. Like it's all well and good canceling the people that do the fucked up shit. Like Ian Connor may have done a madness in his past, right? The whole 31 accusations thing. Barry obviously got convicted of that madness, you know, taking off the sheet of that girl when she's smashing his boy in the fucking room and slapping her bum and all this sort of wild shit, right? And now people coming out saying some stuff. Cool. They've done their shit on their own. So that's the madness that they've done. I just never understand the calling out of the friends and like admonishing them for still being friends with these guys or wanting them to come out and publicly disavow their friends. It doesn't work like that. Anybody that has friends or has family members would know that you have family members right now that have done madnesses that don't get excommunicated from the family and still come to the fucking, you know, the, to the fucking Christmas dinners and shit. So to people to expect, especially clout demon type of guys in the scene to publicate themselves from friends who are somewhat beneficial to their careers um, because of what they've done personally themselves is a little bit, you know, whatever. But I understand because of the severity of what they've been accused of, it does look a bit wild when Rocky is still is so eager to be around them a lot, right? It's still a bit nuts. My only one that's really kind of bugged my head and that's kind of made me think, hey, I wonder why there hasn't been much conversation around it because I feel like, you know, Rocky gets what he gets, but I'm surprised that people like a Skepta doesn't get the same le level of scrutiny considering like, you know, he has Solo 45, be a part of Boy Better Know and now he's in prison for rape and abusing people and all this sort of madnesses. You obviously have the stuff with... um who's the kid what's the fucking kid you've got obviously the Bari stuff Ian Connor stuff and then you've got the other guy I forgot his fucking name the UK guy um I forgot his name the kind of UK Travis Scott but Skeptics had a few people within his kind of close circle of friends who have done a madness but for whatever reason it doesn't seem to kind of stick on him it just seems to be reject re relegated to those guys maybe because he kind of moves a particular way he doesn't really speak too much maybe that's different but I was surprised that people were admonishing fucking rocky to this extent considering he didn't do none of the things that his friends have been accused of they did it and since then really 
you don't really see Rocky around Ian Connor that much. Um, you don't really see him around Bari that much. I feel like ever since him and fucking Rihanna's relationship went to the next level and now they've got like, you know, a kid, another kid in the way, he kind of stays, he kind of just stays with her more so. The only person you really see him around a lot is his fucking um, assistant DJ type of guy. What's his name? Um, what's his name? Fucking, um, I forgot his name. Why did I forget his name? The white guy. That's the only guy you see kind of rocking around. One of the OG fucking members of ASAP Mob. You don't really see him around people too much. He doesn't even hang around Tyler too much. He's kind of grown up a bit. He's got a family. So it makes a lot of sense. So I was surprised people were really getting annoyed by it. It really surprised me. Anyway, long story less long because I'm rambling now. I didn't take this seriously. It wasn't a big deal to me. But I guess, I guess if you're fucking Ian Connor and you see that, you're going to be pissed, right? And you see that because essentially Ian Connor's kind of... I feel like, yeah, that's it, Lou Banger, that's it, Lou Banger, Lou Banger's Rocky's assistant and DJ and whatever, confidant guy, he's the one that's kind of always by his side more so, um, Nas is over there doing his own thing, um, Toby does his own thing, and a few other ones do their own thing, but um, I feel like uh, Lou Banger's always around Rocky, so he's got Rocky's back, but ex except for Lou Banger, I don't see Rocky around the lads like that, you know what I mean, he's just always like with Rihanna, and you know and that's it basically and maybe the other guy he's he's stylist he's um or whatever he's consultant guy um something henshaw the black dude with the bald head anyway long story less long i feel like ian connor most likely you know probably did the shit he was accused of but maybe it's a bit murky because of the scene he's in he kind of kind of operates within that kind of stripper you know type of scene Maybe the whole consent thing is a bit mad. I don't really know. But he's probably got a reason as to why he thinks he didn't do what he's been accused of. But maybe those things happened. But I feel like since then, he has somewhat, you know, tried to be a little bit more pulled back from the scene. He's kind of said on his own. He's not really in the mix like that too much. Maybe because, maybe because, you know, no one wants to be around him. But I feel like he has purposely stepped away from the scene. He kind of does his own brand um and just stays there doing that but he's not really in the mix too much so he must have been really annoyed when his mentions started to blow up hearing fucking rocky on rolling live miami basically calling him calling him out right that's not what he wants to hear so ian connor like a fucking boss right this is a very rare ian connor w he saw this post of bob Allen on instagram that says hey like rocky this is barry ian connor and more at rolling loud and he immediately immediately pressed fucking rocky in the dms on ig immediately i said to him fuck this about question mark rocky comes back at 1 33 a.m in the morning right stressing writing flying so whenever someone presses you you know you know you're getting pressed online by somebody when they ask you a question and it's one line and you reply back with like several lines that's when you know you're being pressed <laughs> usually right <laughs> so um, rocky replies back about nothing you probably won't believe me lol word to do can't blame you if you don't so you know it's not nothing don't worry about that these guys are capping you know he's, do, he's doing what every fucking hip-hop artist does when they say crazy shit they always come out and say after the fact when someone reports it oh you took what i said out of context no we didn't you were on lives talking crazy shit that person took one of your quotes and put it on a picture that's what you said there's nothing out of context there you said that thing anyway cool he said that ian connor replies back I like to hear unbelievable shit because what's going on when we get this tone? So Ian Connor's basically saying, while one for this, we're cool. We've never had issues. Why am I now suddenly hearing on the big stage that now you're calling me a bitch? You're calling me a rapist and shit. While one for this. So basically this little fucking munchkin, this little five foot one hobbit, right? This little fucking guy is fucking pressing Rocky. Can you just imagine that? Can you imagine being Ace at Rocky, being pl pretty flucko, being fucking married to fucking Rihanna, having babies with this woman, building a dynasty with this woman, right? Being the style god that you are, the musical inspiration for fucking Travis Scott, and you're allowing fucking Ian Connor to fucking press you. That goes to show, behind the scenes, these guys aren't as, you know, what you think, right? So next slide. Ian Connor continues to put it on fucking Rocky. Um... Uh, and he sends him another message again in the morning, right? So he leaves it like that. He sends another message in the morning. He says, like, probably in the morning, like, pissed off, like, what the fuck's going on here? He says, clear it up, Flacco. I'm brazy out here. So he's telling Rocky, go and clear that shit up now. <laughs> yeah. Rocky replies with two separate bubbles. 
with bare lines in it. He says, they running with that. I jabbed that bruh and forgot the lyrics. Mid-sentence. Listen closely. He the shit. So he's saying that he meant to diss Bari, but not this Connor. But when he thought of a creep in his head, the next person that came to mind was Connor, which is probably the worst thing to think of, to be honest. I'd be offended at that also. The, the, the one time you think of Bari, you think of him negatively. And then the, the, the next name you can think of is mine. Like, go fuck yourself. Next bubble, Rocky replies, don't feed into that young one. No plea copping, but you know you good in my book. We ain't on that type of time. <laughs> so he basically saying to him, look, I don't believe in cancel culture. You can go and rape one million bitches if you want. The fact that you're dressed good and you're into fucking fashion is, is all good with me, man. You'll be my friend. Don't worry about it. Rape as many women as you want. Molest as many people as you want. Destroy people's lives. It's all good, man. Because you wear fucking, you know, you wear fucking, um, you know, Japanese fucking denim, <laughs> right? And you do side faces when you pose for style, street style pictures. You're always going to be my fucking boy absolutely hilarious and then uh, obviously Ian Connor takes Shin Cross this whole thing and the next bubble he says Ian Connor says to Rocky tell them folks that flucker I look brazy even even if it's mistaken I've been out here doing my thing staying sucker free to minimal bullshit and now I'm all over the place for you talk taking shots at Bari instant karma maybe but I can't dig that so Ian Connor's actually been quite reflective. He's saying, look, I understand that this might be my karma for doing some Madison Day because, you know, my assertion, if you were to ask me really and, you know, ask my humble opinion, do I, do, do I think Ian Connor's guilty of one of the 31 accusations? Yes, for sure. But he did that thing that some people do where they do a madness and they learn their lesson. Right, it's like a serial killer that realizes it's bad and then just stops. <laughs> yeah, he just stopped. So I think he used to do a madness and then he realized, oh shit, I can't, you know, I can't be doing a madness. I have to kind of stop. And he stopped since then. And since then he's been, you know, basically, you know, doing what he's doing with his brand and basically staying out of business. But, you know, still, he accepts the karma for doing the madness, but don't get me involved for the sake of it. But he's telling Rocky, clear it up, clear it up. But then Rocky didn't really clear it up. So then he went on fucking social, did a screenshot, right? Took out the screenshot and shit and put it out there. And basically expose the whole situation and prove that, hey, you know, these guys be talking all this shit, making it seem like I'm a bad dude. But behind the scenes, I'm out here fucking pressing these guys. And then, of course, I think the last comment I think he made, which I don't have a picture of it now, but the last thing he made, I think in the comments, Rocky was like, oh, yeah, those are my boys. It's never beef. They're my boys. It's like, come on, Rocky, man. You got pressed by fucking Ian Connor. This is embarrassing, bro. But hey, it kind of is what it is, I guess, regard. So yeah, um, Ian Connor pressed Rocky, put it on him, made him apologize, that, you know, and retract the insult. And again, it just makes me fucking question sometimes what actually happens behind the scenes and what these guys actually think. Because for me, I don't think it's that difficult to draw a line in certain places when it comes to friends. I've always said, if I have a friend that gets accused of like kitty diddling, that gets accused of like rape and shit, or, you know, sexual assault, I'm out. You're not my friend anymore. Those are the things I can kind of rule you out of. I don't need to hear explanations for the most part. I'm out. I'm done. I may want to do my own research to find out why I but I don't even want to hear from you. Like, just leave me alone. It, weirdly enough, I can actually understand like the murder side of things, strange as this may say, right? I can maybe understand that side of things. Maybe you go into a fight with somebody and you punch them, they hit their head on a weird angle, they pass away, right? Those things happen. But stuff like, you know, drunk driving, uh, stuff like kiddie diddling, rape and stuff and abuse, whatever, you're out. I'm, I'm not involved. So I find it interesting, these guys who have way more to lose than I do, way more to lose than I do, reputational wise, brand wise, whatever it may be, securing your future wise, why would you put your career in a line to like keep a friendship with somebody that's got accused of that kind of madness? Unless you honestly think they didn't do it. Unless you know for a fact they didn't do it. You know the people involved and shit, blah, -de blah, blah, blah. Cool. But I just don't understand why they take that risk. It's always, it's always kind of fascinated me. Like why take that risk to be associated with these people and be cool with them when you know it's only going to do negative to your fucking brand. It's a very strange thing to do personally because I don't know, 31 allegations later, I'm like, maybe there's some truth to this, you know? Maybe, maybe there's some truth to it. Maybe there's some truth to it. I don't really know. But hey, what can you do?